Now, our next guest says that the US is on track to recover, albeit slowly. He manages over $2 trillion at uh, State Street Global Advisors. Chief Investment Officer Richard Lakai joins me now. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, when you look at the global picture at the moment as an investor, what is your main concern? Is it the slowing in growth or is it what's happening in Europe? Definitely what's happening in Europe. Um, slowing growth is always a concern and it makes the European challenge that little, that little bit harder. Um, but we do believe the US is going to continue its slow but steady recovery. Um, and as such, we think the main focus of investors' concern should be on financial contagion arising from the European Eurozone crisis. When you look at what's happening at the moment, uh, there have been a lot of calls for more leadership, stronger leadership, uh, the kind of thing that we saw from Obama in the US. Uh, do you think there's a lack of leadership at the moment in Europe? I think in Europe, the Eurozone crisis has, has become very complex because it's enmeshing banks and sovereign debt in a rather difficult way that makes it hard for policymakers to pull that apart. Yes, you could say that you need more leadership in order to take uh, the political compromises that are necessary for financial markets to see a way forward. Uh, I think many market participants see the way forward as a great deal more harmonization and perhaps a, great, uh, a greater willingness to compromise on these issues. Um, but we have to face the reality that in democracy it's very hard. Uh, and so we can appeal for leadership, um, but it's not easy to deliver. Indeed. Do we need something like euro bonds? Does there have to be a big shift or can we keep going in this very this incremental way where we almost step towards the edge of an abyss and then have a small move? Well, I think the concern certainly is the abyss, that if you're going to exercise leadership, um, then it may be that the catalyst that you need to get the voters behind you is a much more shocking economic scenario. Um, and we certainly hope that we don't get near to that point uh, in terms of more financial or bank distress in Europe. But the Eurobond bond solution certainly is a viable solution depending on a number of other uh, factors, one of which may be a greater degree of fiscal harmonization and a greater degree of willingness to accept that fiscal transfer. But frankly, we already have that in Europe. We have it with the common agricultural policy. So do you think that the markets would be reassured if there was more fiscal harmonization? Is that what they're looking for right now? I think it would have to be a significant change in direction mm -hmm. and it would have to be more than a token effort or at tax discussions and tax harmonizations. But I think some sign that we're heading in that direction and are able to overcome some of those reservations in some of the core northern countries uh, would be a very positive sign for financial markets. And in terms of the ECB's bond buying program, how crucial do you see it as an investor that that continues uh, for, it, for Italy and for Spain and indeed for Greece? Well, it's hard to speculate on the counterfactual. Mm. In other words, what would have happened had Italian and Spanish bond yields continued to travel in a northerly direction uh, had the ECB not started buying. The buying was reasonably modest, but now we're into the period where people may begin to speculate again against this. And if there's a wavering at the ECB, that could clearly be dangerous um, because you could set up again a dynamic in which the bank and sovereign debt questions begin to be questioned in the periphery in a way that's damaging again to the, f to, to the funding of the financial system. Now, Jürgen Stark actually resigned uh, over these bond purchases at the ECB. Do you, does that put more pressure on, uh, on, on the ECB perhaps to, to pull back slightly from this program? I imagine it will intensify the discussion um, it's coming at a, a challenging moment because Trichet will be leaving at the end mm, of October. Uh, and so in a sense you've got new le leadership at the same time. Um, now that obviously gives opportunity in order to set a new direction. Uh, but I'd be confident that Stark may not be the only person who voices objections to uh, some of the actions that have been taken by the ECB, even if market participants were encouraging them. No, this is an uncertain time for investors. Have you any uh, broad brush advice as to where people should be looking? And indeed, from your point of view, you know, where is the value? Are there emerging markets that are offering better value? Well, I think one obvious piece of advice is if, you, if your entire investment strategy depends on you being able to forecast economics or policymaker actions, then you're in, certainly in a sticky spot mm. at the moment. So the lesson is diversify widely, diversify in a way that protects you in circumstances where your assets do badly uh, and in particular you know diversifying a way that helps you when volatility rises 
So looking at uh, emerging market debt, uh, looking at volatile strategies that pay off when volatility rises, like commodity trading advisor type future strategies, uh, is definitely uh, uh, valid. But keep in mind the long term. Keep in mind that there's this risk aversion uh, mm -hmm. is a pattern in which people extrapolate current trends much too far out into the future, for example, in the US Treasury bond market, um, and keep an eye on the value opportunities like emerging markets. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we look at uh, commodities, uh, gold has uh, come off slightly, but we've seen it uh, reaching record highs. Do you still think that uh, those that in commodities and, and safe havens there is some value? We've had an overweight in commodities, um, and that's not a, a, a judgment necessarily that this is a cheap opportunity. Uh, but again, to the sp in, in the spirit of diversifying, we think that they play a part when other things are challenging. Now, commodities are complex because some elements of commodities are safe haven. Uh, and some elements are pro-growth. And that's one reason why being active in commodities um, is something that investors are, again, increasingly turning to. So they're thinking about it not necessarily as a beta, but as an opportunity to simultaneously have that safe haven, but also add value uh, in rising markets. Okay, Richard Lakai, thank you very much indeed for joining us today.